Ladies and gentlemen, Side Strafe back with War Thunder Ground Forces. And today we're going to take a look at the new driver's camera, which is what we're using right now, as well as the binoculars that have been introduced in patch 1.47. On top of that, I will take some time to go over some sighting mechanics for those of you that have been asking questions about how I utilize them in combat. But first and foremost, I am in the driver's compartment right now, as you can see. This is kind of a uh, crude representation of a tank interior. Obviously, we don't have anything 3D or any fancy 2D art, but it works, and I'm fine with something like this. Uh, I'm hoping that they can implement more of this technique for other viewports within the tank. Now, we are in the M4A3 uh, 76 millimeter Sherman tank just for reference, and uh, yeah, this is cool looking. It is neat. I like the way it works. It feels actually like a different game. It actually feels like some sort of tank sim, and it's fun to use. Does it provide any real benefit? Oh, not so much. Maybe it helps you drive the tank a little bit better. It gives you a, uh, uh, a lower perspective of the battlefield. Um, perhaps it's good if you want to try to maneuver your tank through tight corridors. Uh, if you want to better maneuver and get yourself into a, a hull down position. You know, those might be some reasons to use this. Uh, I'm going to drive into an example right now. You can see we've got these tank traps. And say, for example, you just want to get through them and it's easier to maybe drive through like this than it would be to use this because obviously in this mode you don't see unless you look down but if you look down you know sometimes you're missing potential threats so I don't know I, I think right now honestly it's more of a gimmicky thing than anything you would really put into use I like that it's there, though. It's it's neat. I'm I'm not against having it. It's fun, right? Uh, so you know there is that. Um, again, it is crude, and uh, you know each tank is different. Uh, the American tanks, some of them had um, some uh, degree of of rotation with their periscope. This is obviously just an internal uh, view that you can't manipulate anything. Uh, in regards to an actual periscope system, but, you know, again, it's fun. And uh, it's always cool to just see the gun barrel up top there as well. But again, how often are you going to use this? I don't know. But it's there. And again, I hope we see more of that implemented. Mostly when talking about the, uh, the Commander Coppola. I would actually like to see this, but in regards to this. So having an internal view for the commander. Now, right now, most people consider this to be a commander view, but the thing is, there's no commander exposed or unbuttoned. And uh, I think that it would be nice in simulator battles to actually have a physical representation of the commander. So what would happen is, if you are going to use this mode, and obviously the camera would need to be moved uh, to the correct position, be back a little bit more and actually coming out of the cupola, you would have to be exposed and unbuttoned. You would have to tell your commander to get out of the tank, and there would be a physical model of that commander. And then what would happen is, well, you're exposed to small arms fire, and somebody could take out your commander with 30 caliber or uh, whatever types of uh, coaxial machine guns that a tank might have. Um, and then, and only then, would you be able to use the new binoculars which, by the way, are very nice. Uh, I don't think it, I could ask for anything more. You know, their binoculars are simple, right? They work. Um, and I think that they work so well that it should be something that you have to uh, expose yourself to use. So just like a real commander would, right? Makes sense for simulator battles, at least. And then once you button up, you can no longer use your binoculars. So again, you have to make that sacrifice. But then what you would get, especially with this tank, you would get a cupola view. So you'd be able to see outside of uh, these little uh, viewports. And then you could also maybe use your periscope, which is in the center there. 
Uh, now, it would be different for each tank. Not all tanks had, you know, a nice 360-degree viewing angle or, or a proper periscope that they could manipulate. Um, Iron Front did something for all the tanks where they gave everybody 360 degrees of rotation. And you had a view similar to this, but you could just move it all the way around. They could implement something like that to at least give us an internal view uh, temporarily until they kind of customize them or tailor them to each vehicle. I would suggest maybe something like that would be cool. Because um, I think what I'm trying to get at for simulator battles is to provide that buttoned up feel. To feel like you're actually in the tank. Because, you know, this view that you get out here... You know, really, yeah, it feels like your commander view, but it's it's really not because there's not actually any danger of losing your commander to small arms fire or shrapnel or or even main cannon fire. Uh, so there's not really any danger because uh, you're not truly unbuttoned. It's just it's just kind of a cheap camera effect thrown in to make a simulator battle mode. So I would propose something like that. You know, to have this for your Capola and then have to unbutton to be able to use your binoculars but one thing I want to point out that is nice about the binoculars is that you can let's say let's say our gun is here okay we switch over to binoculars we're looking around all quick and everything all right they've got a little bit of a zoom too if you use your right mouse button um, so there's our target right let's say we want to bring the gun around gunner traverse right we click our fire button left mouse button and you can see now that the reticle has positioned itself on the target. And then we can switch. And we're clear to engage. Okay. So do that again. Let's move over to something else. If we have... Let's just say that wreck over there. Okay. Traverse left. Click. Left mouse button. As if to fire. That's going to move the turret onto the target. And then once again, clear to engage. It's pretty cool. I like that they've implemented that because obviously if you're in your binoculars and you're looking all the way over here and you say, oh, there's, there's a target over there. Okay. And then you switch to this and you're like, okay, let me move around. Or even if I'm like this, let me try to find where that guy. Yeah, you can take a mental picture and, and remember where he's at. But there are times where you're dealing with a target that's really, really far out and he's covered in trees, unless you're using ultra low settings. And, uh, you know, they might be hard to find. So that way, you'll use this and you can know what you're looking at the second you pop into the gunner view. So you can just see how it's, it's perfect like that. Now, how do you use these features? Because by default, they're not bound. At least for me, they weren't. So we're going to want to hit escape. Go into controls. Then, you're going to want to go into uh, View Controls. And if we scroll down here, we can see Driver Camera. Now, I set mine to K just because I barely ever use it. I might change it later. Uh, this is just temporary. I wanted to use a key that wasn't in use by something more critical. So I set that to K. There's the Driver Camera. Also, Binoculars, you want to have that on a Priority button. So I have it on a Mouse Button 4 which is uh, one of four buttons on my Logitech G700 on the side there uh, for quick access. So that's there too. Uh, something else I want to show you guys that I think a lot of people aren't aware of as well is sight distance control. This comes in handy if you want to set your uh, gun sights for a certain range without having to continue to do guesswork in game which I don't use it all the time but sometimes it comes in handy and that's sight distance and control and you can uh, have something to uh, bring the, uh, the the crosshair down and up uh, there's supposed to be one that resets it but it doesn't seem to work properly but anyway what we're talking about with that continue anyway is when we're in here so this is going to be your sight distance distance control so I have mine R is going to lower so we can we can change the the sight elevation there. So you know, let's say we've ranged the target. Why would you use this? Well, let's see. Okay, so there's a panther over there, right? Let's say we want to range him for 400, or let's say we know he's 400, and we want to just always be there. So 
that's going to shoot at about the center of the tank. Okay, so 400 meters. Now you're just always set to there. So if you see something next to him, show up. Oh, there's his buddy. We know that he's also going to be 400 meters, and that's always going to shoot there. And then I've got my T key. We'll reset it. So again, you can play with this. So this is really good if you're shooting at targets that are very, very far away. So if you're fighting at 800 meters or, you know, 1,200 meters or more, and, you know, you don't want to mess up, you don't want the recoil to maybe throw you off, or, or you're moving around and you're adjusting a little bit, but you kind of want to remember without having to always do the guesswork, again, you use your sight distance control and, and shoot straight every time. Uh, again, though, you got to remember sometimes to reset it. Uh, always think about your engagement ranges, because even I've made the mistake of setting it for a certain number and then you know leaving to drive around and then oh there's a target right in front of me and your eye instinctively looks at where you just placed it and then you end up shooting completely off you know too high too low whatever so you got to remember sometimes to reset it but it does take a little bit of time also there's another uh option in here that i don't really think matters too much but um it might come in handy it's actually crosshair lighting which I don't think a lot of people know exists. And I've got mine set to L, and it'll actually change it to uh, a, a red color. And uh, it's it's mostly like a night sight, so if you have a dark map, which you don't really get often in this game, I've noticed, but if you do, and you have trouble seeing the black, uh, and you want to, like, obviously we have this tree, so now you can see where this would come in handy. And again, I just think it's something that not a lot of people know about, or at least how to activate. Anyway, going off topic here to discuss a recent forum post that states that simulator battles or absolute simulator battles will now become a permanent addition. So finally, we will get to play absolute sim on a regular basis and whenever we want. And from what I can tell from the forum post, which I will have linked in the description below, it seems that the mode that we know, or the way to join it currently, will move to somewhere near the events uh, tab on the uh, top right hand corner of the garage. At least that's what it seems like from the forum post. It seems perhaps poorly translated in some ways, um, but in any case we get absolute simulator battle modes permanently. And uh, I think they're going to play around with it. They're going to mix it up a bit, and they're doing some different things with aircraft as well as ground forces. Um, again, I'll have the forum post in the description below so you can read up on it. I don't want to spend too much time on it, just because, again, a lot of it is poorly worded, and I don't want to make any mistakes in this video in regards to what it might actually be. But we do know for sure that we are getting some sort of permanent absolute simulator battle mode to play in. Uh, realistic battle mode is changing a bit as well and getting similar treatment and that is all good news now we just need them to fully resolve and i say fully resolve the ultra low settings issue uh, a lot of people were of course confused about some changes that they were making to graphics but really those are changes to the high end and not necessarily the changes that we need on the low end but again some steps in the right direction, but of course, as we know, Gaijin likes to take one step forward and ten back. It seems like what's great one patch is ultimately obliterated in the next. So I really don't want to sit here, hold my breath, get excited. I don't want to try to hype this game up anymore or get you excited for something that just might ultimately lead down the path of disappointment as it often does. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I really hope today's video has been helpful, and uh, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me here on a regular basis, especially those of you that have uh, been sharing my videos. Uh, it really means a lot. You know, it's nice to see that uh, there are thousands of people out there that see value in what I do. I think sharing this content really helps get the point across, because sometimes there's only so much you can do with a forum post or a tweet or a Facebook post or something on Reddit. Sometimes it has to be a video. Sometimes it has to be a voice, audio, something that just really gets to the developer, you know? And when thousands of people share that content, it really drives home the point and the fact that we exist, that we have a voice, that the simulator battle community wants a damn good game. And 
you guys sharing this content, adding your own comments and suggestions, furthering the cause, makes a big deal. Believe it or not, it really does. So always appreciated. Keep on doing what you do, ladies and gentlemen. And I will definitely see you on the next one.